for. The name Jesus Christ has authority. The name Jesus Christ has power to save. Even today, it's unto the ultimate who call upon him. Oh, that you may know that you're on the way, you're on the way to hell without Jesus. You're on the hell. You're on the way to hell without Jesus. You may look this way, you may look that way. You may search here, you may search there. But without Jesus Christ, you will not be saved. You may say that I don't want saving. Are you sure about that? Because the man and woman in their pride thinks they know it all. When really they know nothing because it says in God's word, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. And I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So where is the scholar? Where is the wise man? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made uh, foolishness the wisdom of this world? Of course he has. Only by Jesus Christ can you be saved. This is the most important message you'll ever hear. The most important message you'll ever hear is, am I saved? Have I got Jesus Christ as my saviour? Why do I need to be saved? Why do you need to be saved? Because you're going to go to hell if you ain't got Jesus Christ as your saviour. In hell, you won't be laughing. In hell, there will be no such thing as a face that you have now. In hell, but no such thing as a cringing up or a laughing and smiling. In hell, my friends, it will be a totally different story. The rich man, the poor man, Jesus Christ, spoke about hell more than any other preacher. Why? Because he's not trying to scare you, he's trying to warn you and bring you the message that hell is real. Hell is not a place where it's warm and cosy and you're with your homies and you're having a good time. Hell is a place, my friend, when you will be on your own forever. There will be no one to love you or care about you. Hell is a place where you'll be forgotten and a land... A land that's best forgotten, really. Jesus Christ came to save you from hell. Well, like I said, it's not by power, it is not by might, but it's by my power, says God. Hallelujah. I rather boast in the power of Jesus Christ. I rather boast in the cross of Jesus Christ because that's where it all lies. That's right. Yes, we're in the city of Nottingham that's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Jesus Christ is another, is is another cross, day. It was going to Jerusalem. We're always on the streets of Nottingham preaching and the and gospel the every Saturday from uh, one uh, one p.m. onwards. The King of Kings and Glory the Lord of God. Lords. Um, Minister Andrew, God Evangelist Andrew's praying, uh, preaching right now. Glory be to God. It's a busy nation. day Look at it now. in the streets it's of like Nottingham. Nation. Glory be to God. Yes. Let the generation know that Jesus Christ is Lord. You'll be walking about Hallelujah. life with happiness and Many people and walking on the street. Uh, some laughing, some mocking, but you know the gospel going forward in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Where you're going to spend eternity? Yes. Richard. There will be two places where you will spend eternity, either heaven or hell. That's right. There will no be in between. There's no purgatory. There's no second chances. And there's no Mohammed, no Mary Baker Eddy, no Joseph Smith, Ellen G. White, oh Ron Hubbard. They're not going to save you. That's right. Only Jesus Christ can save you from hell. Jesus! Only Jesus Christ came down from heaven. Hallelujah! Only Jesus Christ went to the cross and died. Jesus! Only Jesus Christ says that I shall come again in glory, in my Father's glory. Only Jesus Christ said that when it calls upon me, Jesus. they shall be saved. Jesus! Jesus! Says in God's word, believe on me and you shall be saved. Woo. Only Jesus! Do you know him? You know, Thomas come unto Jesus, okay? Thomas come unto Jesus and he said to Jesus, unless I feel the prince in your hands and thrust my hand in your right side, I shall not, I don't believe. You know, I can't believe it. Thomas was with Jesus all this time. Jesus did all these miracles in front of Thomas and yet Thomas still did not believe. But Jesus turned around and said to Thomas, you believe because you have seen what Jesus Christ said, blessed are those who have not seen, yet they believe. Do you believe? Do you believe? A time is coming, my friends, and mark it down in, the, in your dictionaries, mark it down in your diaries, mark it down or get it tattooed in the front of your eyeballs that you're going to see every time you blink, one day I'm going to die. 
and then the never I bore, having tattooed or written on your diaries, I'm going to meet God. It doesn't matter what I say, what I do, it doesn't matter about my opinion, I'm going to stand before God. And like it says in this Bible here, you may have your word, you may have your say, but God will speak the final word that day. It's about coming to Jesus, that's why I'm here. I'm not here to judge you, I'm not here to condemn you because there'll be one that will judge and there'll be one that condemn on that day. I'm here to bring the message of salvation. Just like Paul, Peter, and John, Stephen, Ananias, all these people of old from the Bible. It's the same message that they preached, that the same message that's being preached today for those who have Christ living in them. It's the same message that Jesus Christ is Savior, that Jesus Christ is the Son of a living God, Amen. and that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Woo! And that by Jesus Christ, whoever comes to receive Jesus Christ as Savior, they shall receive a full pardon. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Jesus! It is written in God's word, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah, come God to Jesus, then. come to Jesus. Jesus. The Father of mercies and God of all comforts, who comforts us in all our reflection, uh, afflictions, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in their affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Romans 8, 17 says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. John 16, 33, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. To Luke 14, 27, whoever does not hear, does not, whoever does not bear his own cross and comes after me cannot be my disciple. It's about Jesus. I'm boasting about the cross, the sufferings of Jesus Christ on the cross. He bore the wrath of God on the cross. The, 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 the sky was darkened. The earth shook. The curtain, which is a veil that separates us from the holy place to the most holy place, the holy place was torn in two from top to bottom. Now Jesus Christ has made a way for man and woman to approach the throne of grace. God, by his mercy and by his grace, by sending his only son, Jesus, has made a way for every human being. No matter what sort of background you're from, no matter how much of a bad boy you are, or a bad girl you are, you can approach the throne of grace. God has made a way where no one can make a way, but God has made a way which is through Jesus Christ. The blessed come to Jesus. It's about Jesus, it's not about how much you can gain in this life. You're going to stand before him one day. Yes, you will. You'll stand before him, then no surprise, it's going to happen. Matthew 27, 46. And about the night hour of Jesus Christ, he cried out. He cried out with a loud voice. I mean, I'm loud now. I'm loud, I'm loud, loud now. But Jesus Christ didn't whisper up on the cross. Jesus Christ cried out on the cross. Why was Jesus crying out on the cross? He was crying out because he so loves you. And Jesus Christ said here, night father, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, let my sabbat finai, which is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God the Father turned his own back on his only son, Jesus. He turned his back on his only son, Jesus. And Jesus Christ is hanging upon the cross there. Nails through each hand, nails through his feet. Suffering and bleeding for us, to die for us. How great is the love of God that he may send his only begotten son Jesus to die for a wretched rebellious people that we are. 
do not love the world nor anything in it. If you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. Why gain the whole world but lose your very soul? You and the world, you and the world, that's all you're ever going to have. When you die, you're going to have nothing. No hope, nothing before God. Nothing. You cannot stand before God and say, well, take this out, God. I've got all my goods, I've got all my money, I've got all my pride, my ego, stuck it and keep stacking it, and God's going to say, that's going to be burnt up like hay, straw and stubble. It means nothing before me. Come to Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not about anybody else. Jesus! There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes! That's where the power is. Jesus! That's where the power to become a new person. Woo! In Jesus Christ lies. You may say to yourself, how do I get born again? How do I get saved? Oh, my friend, it's by confessing with your mouth, believing from your heart, and you shall be saved. That's right. With the heart, with the mouth, confession is made, and with the heart, one believes. Do you believe that Jesus Christ can come into your life? Do you believe that Jesus Christ can save you? Do you believe that your sins can be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ? Do you believe, my friends, that you can get a new start in life? Because there's some people on the streets today, if not all, they want a new start, they want a fresh start. And could Jesus Christ will give you that fresh start. Oh, yes. That's Jesus. right. So God bless to Jesus Christ. It's about coming to Jesus Christ. It's about coming to Jesus. No one else is going to save you from hell. No one else can get you a right standing before the most holy God. You know when you take Jesus Christ as Savior, and when you die, knowing you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you will stand there before God in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Not in your righteousness, but in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. about Jesus. Hebrews 10.10 10. And by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hebrews 5.8 says, Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Hallelujah. Philippians 1.29 says, for it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ that you should not only believe in him but also suffer him for his sake. 2 Corinthians 5.11 says, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. You're going to stand before God, people. You must stand before God. Which your point doesn't really matter. Healthy or not, healthy or ill, it doesn't matter. You're going to stand before God. It doesn't matter about your opinion. It doesn't matter about what you say. It doesn't matter about what you think. You're going to stand before God. Oh man, oh woman, flesh and blood that you are. You're going to stand before God. Jesus Christ gave a story. There was a rich man who. All he was talking about there is just the world. The rich man was just talking about the fleeting passes things of this world. The rich man was just talking about what he can get out of this world. The rich man was just talking about all he can get in the here and now. And it says that the poor man, he died. Praise the name of the Lord. And it says that the rich man, when he died, he ended up in hell. He ended up in a place he thought he'd never be in. The rich man, because he lived for the world, are you living for the world? Are you that rich man living for the world? The rich man died and he ended up in hell. And he said that he opened his eyes up and he's in a place he never thought he'd be in. And he said that the rich man in hell, he opened up his eyes and straight away he cried out. And he said to Father Abraham, he says, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me. Dip your finger in cold water and soothe my burning tongue, for I am in torment in this flame. Torment. The man was alive in hell, he's not dead in hell because he felt the real pain in hell. And Abraham says, you remember all the good times you had and all the good things you had. This word means nothing before God. 
It says in God's word that the things of this world are an abomination unto him. It's time to come to Jesus Christ. Your pride is my as far as what your ego is. Oh, mock us. God will mock you on the last day. Don't you worry about it. Romans 5.3, I'll come to a close.